This week on Health, we visit a home away from home for seriously ill children. This is not a place to die. This is a place of life, a place to rest. A haven in Toulouse known as Oasis, neither a house nor a hospital, but something in between. What do you prefer, the hospital or here at Oasis? <laughs> One of its kind in France, now under threat of closure by the end of the year. It's a shame because we didn't have enough time to prove this could be useful in France. When this centre in Toulouse opened its doors nearly two years ago, no one could be sure whether it would be a success. The team behind it wanted to improve the health conditions of seriously ill children. Now its very existence is threatened and they've agreed to let us inside to understand how it's worked. This is not an ordinary house visit, and this young girl is not your average 11-year-old. Rosine has a type of bone cancer which requires long periods in hospital. But if she likes what she sees, she can stay here with her mum between treatments. Can people come to see me? Everyone can come here to visit you. Your friends, your family. Yes, of course they can. That's great. I find it's very pleasant, so I think we could stay here for several days without any problem. <laughs> Oasis has four bedrooms and even a family suite like this one here. With all the colours and toys, there's very little sign that this is a place for sick children. The only difference being here that doctors and nurses are only a button away. Today it's Marianne who's on call. She's a nurse and yet she doesn't wear a uniform a detail which has become a signature of the home and one of many that contrast with that of a hospital. I hope we bring serenity, comfort, but also a listening ear. We have the time to rest, sit down, to play, talk about clothes, makeup. Five-year-old Naisa knows what it's like to live here. She spent four months in Oasis earlier this year, much of it in this room, the pink one. What do you prefer, the hospital or here at Oasis? For the moment, Naisa's health is stable, but for other children, the house represents the end of life, a confronting idea that the staff at Oasis address. The death of a child is really a notion we can't accept, something intolerable, so I think many of us try to avoid it, not think about it, not talk about it, and yet it exists, and this reality is something we deal with in this house. The man behind this project is Christophe Carpentier, a former palliative care nurse. He tells us Oasis is under threat of closure because often the house is half empty. Two years is short to evaluate a house like this. I think we need a little more time, a little more recognition, more showcasing, more people talking about this type of place which is unique in France and which has provided so much. The Toulouse Children's Hospital is a half-hour drive away. Marianne travels here from Oasis each Monday for a meeting with other professionals working in palliative care. So, regarding the care of the children... This afternoon, there's more than 10 patients to discuss. Together, the team decides whether to recommend a stay at Oasis. But often, the doctors do everything they can to care for children at home, using a mobile hospital service directed by Dr Souk. The majority of parents at the moment ask to go home directly, and we now have the means to authorise many of them to return to their house, so that's probably why the demand is less than it would have been several years ago. But there are still children for whom it's very important to have a place like Oasis as an in-between. Julian and his mum, for example, would be lost without Oasis. Julian has Duchenne muscular dystrophy, an incurable disorder. They regularly stay at the house for a short break. They were even hoping to come here for Christmas in what's become their second home. When we came here, we had the impression we'd found another family. Believe me, it's important. It's important because Julien and I, we have the impression that we exist, which is not always the case when we're outside. 
Right now, the patient who needs Oasis more than anyone would rather not be filmed. Farah, aged 14, suffering from Hodgkin's lymphoma. Her father has, however, noticed her morale improve since she moved here with him in August. When she goes to the hospital, it's because her health has deteriorated and she needs intensive treatment, which is more painful. Here, the name House of Rest is accurate. It really is a place of rest. If the home is closed, Farah and her father would have to move to the hospital full time. They'd prefer to stay here in what the team at Oasis like to describe as a house of life. Oasis opened its doors with support from the Red Cross. It has an annual budget of 750,000 euros, of which 70% is paid by the state. In your opinion, does France need to devote more resources towards care for children with serious and incurable diseases as well as their families? France isn't starting from scratch in terms of palliative health care. For a few years now, we've had institutions that train teams to support children nearing the end of their life. There also exists, across all regions in France, mobile palliative health care teams. The real issue now is to decide whether the hospital is the only way or still the best way to help families in distress, especially in situations where the hospital is neither desirable or necessary, and yet staying at home is not an option either. Oasis was a pilot project. Is there a real risk today that this home may close? Today we're waiting for the results of an external evaluation launched by the minister who will determine the future of Oasis whether the project continues or has to be modified, or if we need to think of a new project. What's certain for us is that this project has demonstrated a real interest. The way in which a respite house like this functions, for example, there's no routine, no white coats. The fact that we adapt the care to each individual's needs is something we can learn from and something we can apply more generally in a hospital. So the lessons learned from this experience need to be retained regardless of the results of the overall experiment. Thanks very much for being with us. Oasis was inspired by similar setups in the UK, Germany and Canada. In Montreal, a centre known as The Lighthouse has existed since 1999. François Gatt's correspondent with this next report. A swimming session for Melody. The young girl can finally get out of her wheelchair, helping to ease the pain she has suffered since her birth. This pool is one of the many amenities at this hospice. With an annual budget of three and a half million euro, the lighthouse provides access to the latest innovations in palliative care. Here, everything possible is done to make young patients feel comfortable. The pool is an environment where we can give the child the opportunity to have a different kind of experience. It's a place where he can sometimes extend his body in ways he could never have done before and find a bit more freedom in his body. There's a pool, but also a multi-sensory room, either for relaxation or to stimulate the children. Lise, the director of the centre, counts on governmental assistance of 1.6 million euro but private donations also account for more than half of the budget. This room cost about 27,000 euro. This room was originally financed by a company, and that is one thing that we do when we need special equipment, such as a special bed for children who have bad pain problems and need a special bed that blows hot air. Well, we ask charitable foundations for help. They often appreciate being able to give very specific funding for equipment. Private funding is a tradition in North America. Most associations do some kind of fundraising. At the Lighthouse, a small sign at the entrance of each room thanks each donor. So our bathroom is called High Tide and was funded by Gaz Metro, while this room was paid for by the Roasters Foundation. The equipment, including the bed and television, that was donated by Bell and the Monty family. The use of private donations does not mean there's a lack of political will to support hospices. Dr. Rodrigue says this is a societal choice. We are at the stage where we're saying we have the necessary innovation in Quebec, we have the right thinking, 
We've developed the necessary expertise. Now we must generalize this approach and offer services that will be appropriate for all the people who live in Quebec who are nearing the end of their life. The Lighthouse is one innovation among others. The Lighthouse is an innovation that remains unique in Quebec, at least at the moment, one whose motto is fun until the end of life. It's estimated around 2,500 children are in need of palliative care here in France each year. And as we've just seen, centres like Oasis and others around the world are challenging the way that care might look like. That brings us to the end of this week's show. Thanks for joining us here on France 24. We'll see you next time.